know, and that's, and that's just got to come within. That's a mindset. It's always a mental game. Yeah. You know, if you believe you're somewhere in your head and you dream that every night, when you get there, <laughs> you're going to know what to do because you've already seen it over and over again. Like, I've already pictured my house on the hills three years ago when I, when I committed to this basketball stuff for real. So, like, for me to see it now and put it in the picture, it just gives me more inspiration to go do it, go work harder, go, go try something new, you know, get out of my comfort zone. Hastings, Nebraska, 402, uh, 785. I graduated from Northern Kansas. Uh, so all over the Midwest, uh, I got support, I got family. I got family in Omaha, Nebraska. Shout out my big bro, uh, Arthur Lyle, Master Barber in Nebraska. Uh, my dad's from Omaha, my mom's from Hastings. My mom's a Spady, my dad's a Lyle. My dad tried to like move out the hood, move out of the trouble so we didn't have to grow up in it. So he moved to Hastings, which is like a nice, kind of an older community. Um, really no violence, uh, a lot of drugs, but on the violence side, it's pretty slow compared to Omaha. Um, so thank, thank my father for that, just try to get us out to struggle. Crazy story, I got the Kool-Aid tatted on me. I don't know if you can see it. I'm actually related, my family uh, invented Kool-Aid. His name is Edwin Perkins. And he's my grandfather's uncle, so my great great uncle. And uh, Hastings, Nebraska, if one thing we're known for, besides Tom Osborne, Nebraska football, is that it's the birthplace of Kool Aid. Uh, how y'all play? Y'all can score, y'all can pass, y'all can shoot, what? Uh, shoot, pass, I guess. What's your favorite celebration? Uh, I'm not sure. Nah, you gotta show me right now. Say you just <laughs> scored on me. Okay, what are you about uh, to do? Maybe I like pop the pistols. <laughs> Oh, you! Ooh. Okay, I respect it. I respect it. This is what I like to do. Hold on, hold it. Put it on me. I like to put the. You hold it for me. I pull the air. I, I gotta blow the arrows up. You feel me? I'm a sharpshooter. Yeah. Pull the arrow out. Yeah. Give them three of them and they run back. Over the years, uh, <laughs> I can say my family was the first mulatto family to ever like really be involved in the community as far as like playing sports, you know, uh, socializing, just, just being involved in a positive way. We had a lot of discrimination, a lot of hate from the community because they didn't feel like we deserved to be there. No matter what they said we were, we proved them wrong, that we were, this is who we are, this is who we're gonna be. So like growing up, I faced a lot of identity issues. I faced a lot of like trying to figure out who I was because to all the Caucasian people in the whole community, I was identified as black. But to like black people in Omaha or African Americans uh, around, not in Hastings, but outside of Hastings, they see me as a white boy. So like I had a hard time trying to identify who I am instead of just being who I am, Dion Lyle. Like that's the only one, I'm one on one. Yeah, man, I'm on the live, man. I gotta show love to my fans, my followers, let them know how I'm living. Let them know I'm really blibbed up. And if you don't know what blibbed up means, I'm gonna teach you a lesson right now. So right here, it's tatted on my skins forever. BL means blessed. You got that? X stands for and, it's different. It's different, don't, don't question me, it's different. VN stands for living. Blessed and living, count your blessings, young blood. I've really been playing ball my whole life. Um, I was fortunate enough to, my father played ball and uh, he put a basketball in my hand at a young age. So as far as like hooping, I've been playing my whole life. But like organizational ball and like being, ref, ref, like having referees and having to like set up plays and whatnot, I really only played like three years. Um, like I said, I had, I, had a, I was facing an identity issue. So like the way I would kind of like draw a lot of attention is I would act out, you know, I would do like some negative or I would do some, just get in trouble for no reason to try to get attention. 
And so that caused me to get kicked out of school a couple of times to just be put up in situations that I hurt myself in so I couldn't play basketball. One of my coaches uh, made me sign a contract so if I violate probation or whatever, I can't play. And then I violated probation, it kicked me off the team, and then they made it a school thing as well, which makes no sense. So the school reacted on the situation too, and they kicked me out of school. So I had to find out a way. I did homeschooling for the rest of the semester. I had like two options to go to like rehab or go to Boys Town, because I, I failed a, a UA. So I went to rehab. I went to rehab in Valley Hope in Norton, Kansas. And Thank God I didn't save my life because that's when I finally decided to take basketball more than just the outlet. I started to take it as like, this is my way out. Before, basketball was just something that I could go play when I was angry, when I was mad, when I was happy, when I was sad. Like it wasn't, I really didn't see a future in it. You know, I always told everybody I'd be the first one to go D1. I didn't even say NBA back then. I was like, I'm going D1, I'm going D1. <laughs> Free Drew, sunlight, pull up to Laguna Beach, handing out L's, <laughs> stay I, played, I went to Northern Kansas my junior year. I got kicked out of high school, went my junior year. Uh, I had to write a letter to the board in the state of Kansas and tell my situation. They blessed me and passed me right away to be eligible. So now I'm eligible for track. I go to track, I get third in high jump in state. First year in track ever. So like that just showed me that I can do more in my life than just basketball. Senior year, play football, get all state, you know, all, all these accolades that I never thought I would get. Um, play basketball, basketball comes around, so now I'm, I'm trying to get a scholarship, I'm trying to go to college, because I know that my family doesn't have the money to pay for my schooling. Like that's, I knew that from day one, that if I was gonna go to school, it's because of basketball, which a lot of other people know as well. Like, college is expensive, and so I came into Northern Kansas and I killed right away. You know, I, I was averaging 30 like the first month, and then they started boxing one in me the rest of the year. Finished with like 24 and eight and seven, something like that. And I still had no offers because I was like a, I was a take a chance kid, you know? And if you have a kid that you've already seen for three years, why would you take a risk on a kid that just showed up in one year? So I went the Juco route because that's the only route I knew. And my older brother went Juco, free Drew, I got him on the shirt. Um, so I came to Cloud and I would just go crazy in practice, just killing dudes. But off the court, I wasn't living the life the right way. And thank God my coach didn't let me just hoop because that would have set me up for failure. You know, he did me a justice and said, no, like you need to figure out your life before I can play you. So my freshman year, I didn't even play. I played like three games and averaged like 15. The last three games I played like, I had like 20, 24, and like 18 in the last three games. So like that showed that I could do it. But if I get my life together off the court, I'm gonna go crazy. So freshman year, he said, Dion, like, you need to figure out who you are, otherwise I'm not bringing you back. He's like, you need to literally sit down and think about who you are and what you want to be because you just act, you just mold into your environment. Like you have like 12 different personalities. You just act however the people are around you acting. And that's what I got from just growing up in Hastings is being labeled as this. And I just became the label because it was easier. You know, it's a lot easier to just be what people say you are than to just be yourself and, and, and take the hate up full on. So like that was just me. That was grooved into me from my peers and my environment. Um, so I had to really fight hard to be like, nah, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it all the time. I always tell everybody that asks me, how do you do it? You know, how do you stay motivated? How do you get to where you want to be? You just gotta always stay ready because literally someone can call you off of something you've done for two years ago. Be like, nah, we need him. We need this guy. We need this guy. And you gotta be ready to be like, yeah, that's me, but I'm better now. Like you see my footage two years ago. I'm showing you why I did that and why I'm me and why I'm gonna keep improving and why I need to be on board. In my sophomore year, it just clicked. You know, I, I focused on basketball and basketball only. I came back, uh, first team, All-American in the Jayhawk Conference, which is the best Juco league in America. I don't care what anybody says, like, they got the rawest talent, you know? And um, 
did my thing, average 15 and like six, seven. You know, I started getting calls from coaches that I've always dreamed of getting calls from, like D1 coaches. Even just to have coaches call you and to like recognize your talent, that is a great feeling. If you come from if you come from no hype or a town where like no one's ever made it out of, to actually get a phone call from a coach and be like, hey, we want you. You're great, like this is what you can do. This and uh, at the time you don't know that they're just selling you, but like the first couple calls you get, you really feel that shit. Like you really feel that. Like you feel like you're really wanted. You know, but once you get older you realize it's just a game. I took the offer to UTSA uh, on my visit. You know, they hit me with an ultimatum, like, you know, take the offer or we're taking it off the board. So I had to work my way up. I started as, like, damn near the 10th man on the team. I thought I was the best player, and I beat everybody one-on-one -on -one several times. I think I got the most wins out of everyone. So for me, I'm wondering why am I off, coming off the bench when I'm over here showing out. And every time you, you're in my ear telling me, I want you to be the leader of the team. I want you to be the best player of the team. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. Life was just going great. Like, life was good, man. And um, we lost in the conference tournament, but we had a great year overall. We got 20 wins. My coach got a contract extension. I got six men a year. Javon Jackson got freshman of the year. Um, I think Key and Wallace, he got a uh, Fresh first, first or second freshman team, so same with Javon, got the freshman team. Um, and then I'm thinking everything's going good. And then I'm thinking I'm coming back and whatnot. And just like that, you know, my, my goal didn't align with their goal and they just thought it was time for me to go. You know, and that's, and that's, that's cold cut. That's how it is, that's life. You know, you can't always expect what's gonna happen or you can't always, playing everything out. Um, so I just left on mutual respects, left it at that, and moved on, tried to transfer. But you know you gotta sit out of here if you transfer D1, which I don't believe in at all because you see coaches transferring all the time and they can coach right away. So why can't players play right away? It doesn't make any sense at all. So for just knowing me personally, I knew that like if I had to sit out of here, it'd be hard for me to to stay in school because I don't I only go to school because of basketball. I don't like school. You know, I get good grades because I'm smart, I'm intelligent, but I don't like school. Like who likes I don't like to sit in class all day and listen to somebody I don't even think is smarter than me, teach something that they don't even fully know. And they only doing that to, to feed their family. Like they have to do that. So I don't really believe in the concept. I got a phone call from my coach, uh, Eddie Denard, fire mixtapes. It actually was a DM. I met him through one of my teammates, George Wilburn. But I hit him up through that and asked him to do me a highlight tape for my recruitment. Because at the time, like my coaches weren't really helping me with recruitment. I had to do it all myself, which is pretty hard. Especially if you don't know coaches and you're just trying to reach out to everybody. So I'm reaching out to verbal commits. I'm reaching out to all these Twitter feeds and just trying to get my name out there. Um, so like it was real frustrating at first, and it was I'm, I'm I'm already so late in the recruitment process that like I only had a short amount of time to get up an offer, and I got some offers. Fortunate enough, you know, South Dakota State, Nickel State, um, Creighton was gonna offer, but they needed someone right away, so they wanted to see if I could like get my thing, so I didn't have to sit out a year, if, like something I could pull up some dirt or something. And I was like, you know, it's not even that big a deal. Like, it is what it is, you know. Coach Denard just DM'd me and was like, we want you to come to the league. Cause he's seen all my highlights. He did my highlight tape. So he knew I was a dead eye shooter. And like, you know, I was kind of limited at UTSA. I played the four and I'm really a two, three. Like you can see in this league, I played the damn near the one. And I already messed with LeVar off respect. You know, I've been watching his journey and his son's journey the last three years since he's been talking crazy. And, you know, I respect him as a father figure. I respect him as a black male. I respect him as a businessman. I respect this whole brand he's uh, evolving and this whole thing that he's not scared to do. And for me, I don't fear nothing. So, like, I got ultimate respect for him because he don't care. He gonna do what he wants to do. Like, he does not care what nobody thinks. He, he knows and he sees the vision. 
and that's and that's super unique because not everybody can see a vision of where they're going to be at and how to get there thought it was a great opportunity in history to promote my brand and to get exposure because I've came from the struggle, discrimination, poverty, um, being told I'll never be anything in my life but behind bars or in jail, being told I'm nothing in life. You know, as a little kid, I'm being told like, you know, you're going to be dead in five years. As a little kid, I'm being told that you're going to be in jail just like your older brother. You know, my older brother got locked up when I was in the eighth grade. So I had to deal with that pressure as well. And I didn't know how to deal with that. So for me, I would just act out. Like I said earlier, I just were wild, and, you know, fighting, just finding different ways to express myself because I didn't know how to do it. And I was a shy, I was shy as hell. So I would not talk to you if I didn't know you, you know? So like, for me, it's just to reach those kids that don't feel like they have any hope, don't feel like they have any future and to say like, you know what, don't worry about those kids picking on you because in five years from now, they're going to be picking on themselves, mad at themselves like, damn, I didn't do what I wanted to do. I thought I maxed out in high school. No, you didn't. That's just the beginning of finding out who you are. You know, the kids that get picked on are the kids that already know who they are. You know, they don't change from nothing. That's why they're picking on you because they're sitting here wondering, damn, why is, you know, why is he so, like, why is he just, he's ugly, but he's so confident. Why, why is that? I need to be that confident. I look better than him. I'm not even that confident. They mad. And if they not hating on you, you ain't doing something right. You feel me? So it's like, man, I'm just trying to live out my dream and inspire kids to live their dreams out as well. Because for you to be afraid of who you are is one of the biggest downfalls you could ever have. Being proactive being a, a great influence and also trying to get better every day. I know a lot of times it's easy to get comfortable, it's easy to settle on what you get and just be like, okay, I got it, now I can just be cool. But for me, I try to always stay uncomfortable. You know, there's a quote I got on my skin, it's, it's a MLK quote. It says, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. Follow me on uh, Lao Style, L Y L E S T Y L minus the E. Don't put the E on. Follow me on Instagram. Like all my photos. Support me. Yeah, if you mess with the boy, show love.